Hey everyone, I am here to do a quick video to show you how I am using um, Zotero in my searches to keep track of articles and things that I might want to use for my dissertation. So many of you have asked how I'm using that and I wonder if maybe this might be a useful way for me to share what I'm doing. So I just have here a typical article that I might find. I usually, when I find something that looks um, useful to me, I look at the abstract. Um, and especially if they have references, I might review that. I also tend to check where something is cited. Anyways, I tend to go through a bibliography and find sources that might also be useful and rapidly I just pile up tons and tons and tons of stuff. And so here's how I'm trying to keep everything um, organized. One of the things that I've done in my Zotero piece here um, is that I have, um, let me grab a tool here to draw. I have made a number of folders in my Zotero uh, area in order to try to keep track of what I'm doing. And so this, I didn't start with this. I started with just a couple folders. I think I had dissertation ideas was one of my first ones. Um, I have a folder down here for leadership general. When um, we were taking the leadership course last fall, this is where I stored my stuff for those papers. Um, I archived my stuff on my leader paper because that's not part of my dissertation. I have a folder down here for research methods. I know that I'm probably going to do a qualitative thing and if I find a great qualitative paper or if I run across a resource that everyone is citing for qualitative research, I'm throwing it in here. But these are my folders that have kind of emerged as I've been working through my topic. And some of these I could probably get rid of or archive, but right now I'm just freely adding folders as I go. And so this is the first kind of point for Zotero is I think you have to start to think like a librarian. Think like someone who actually has a box of cards in front of you that you have to keep organized except you're doing it digitally. And so being able to nest folders like I have here, um, I've got, you know, my dissertation, um, folder then broke into complexity leadership, broke into adaptive leadership, like all of these things are, um, are areas of dissertation research that matter to me and I've been trying to kind of keep them organized for myself. Uh, you also have the ability to nest folders, which you may have seen just now as I was kind of dragging folders back and forth. And so like I started a pile just of dissertations that I was finding based on adaptive leadership. So usually when I'm searching, I'll kind of go through and pile things up and try to pull them all in at the same time. And then I'll go back through and maybe do some reading. Those are different activities for me. So anyways, that's kind of um, what we have what we have going on here. So showing you, I've been working through um, a folder where I've been storing articles related to the shift in higher education from teacher center to learner center. So I've been going along finding stuff and this is my practice. So just to kind of show you what I tend to do. Um, I'll find something I think might look useful. Apparently that one didn't show up. Here's one, enhancing teaching quality through peer review of teaching. Um, looks like it's at Taylor and Francis. And so the simple action, if you have your um, uh, little doodad up here at the top, the little plug-in plugged in for Zotero, you probably learned that you can quickly um, grab things this way. And so this is usually my typical habit. I just grab it. If it can grab the PDF, that's cool. Um, a lot of times it does not. Uh, the trick that I've been using, and I'm not suggesting this is a good thing or a bad thing, it's just the thing that works, if you go to the front of a research article and type in HTTPS colon colon or colon slash slash scihub.tw slash. Um, so let me say that again. That is HTTPS colon slash slash scihub.tw slash. Um, if you put this onto the beginning of an article, uh, that will add the little Sci-Hub search engine to the front of your piece. Um, and a lot of times that will bring you to this page that looks very sketchy. <laughs> but what has happened, I believe down here, let me see if it actually happened. It did. Um, it didn't show up here as like a really obvious thing, but once it opened this page, um, Sci-Hub went to its 
database access and said, oh, we have access to that article and grabbed it and downloaded it. So often what I will do is if I get an article that I want to use, but I can't get the, the um, full text from our databases or it's not obviously there, you can also grab it from Sci-Hub and then I attach that copy to the article. And so now um, that article is here. Uh, in the PDF. <clears throat> so now Zotero has in its archives the PDF copy. I could throw away the copy that's in my downloads down here. Um, so this tends to be what I do as I'm working my way through articles, um, assessing higher education teachers through peer assistance and review. Mm, let's see where this shows up. Not everything pulls in the abstract, not everything pulls in correctly, so it is a good practice when you're grabbing stuff for Zotero, to take a minute to just make sure that the, um, that the abstract has actually come in. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this one because this does look useful to me. They have a download this paper link, which if Zotero doesn't actually do the download, what I've learned is that that usually means that it doesn't exist. I'll see where we get, but in this case it did. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach that file here. So just to kind of point out again what I'm doing, I use my links to find the stuff I'm looking for. Um, I use the plug-in button up here to grab the thing. <clears throat> I let Zotero figure out what it is. Not, it's not always right. For example, it called this a report. This is, eh, this is a journal article, and that's probably how it should be framed. Um, so sometimes you have to go back and kind of clean it up, but it usually catches most of the stuff. In this case, it didn't though. It didn't really catch the right publication. So I try to catch like these kinds of details as I'm doing them. Um, this publication, it's volume nine, it's number, issue number two. Um, we don't have pages listed here. The date is January, 2012 on the publication. Um, do we have a DOI? We don't, but we do have an SSRN. So you just kind of have to keep up with, um, yeah, because sometimes you just have to keep up the, the information that's here. Um, it doesn't always give you everything you're looking for. But anyways, once you grab it and once you make sure your, your citation is correct, um, you can store your copy and it's here. I do also use tags and notes. Um, I might tag this, for example, it's not tagged higher education. I was keeping up with that for a while when I wasn't sure where my um, project was gonna go. I'm gonna tag this assessment since that's growing as one of the tags that I'm using. Um, I might use peer review of teaching. I've already got that tag, that looks pretty useful. So I do like using tags to help me keep up with things. I also use notes. If I am reading an article and I find something really good, I might grab it and post it here as a note so that I can get back to it more easily in the future. So that's a pretty basic um, view of what I do. Uh, it's a pretty basic view of how I'm storing things. Now let me show you one other thing, and that is I am using Scrivener for writing. So let me bring that up. Scrivener looks like this. It's a very basic, straightforward writing platform. Uh, this template is one that it comes, um, the basic form of it comes built into Scrivener for an APA paper. I threw out everything that wasn't related to our dissertation project. I went through the template that Dr. Givens gave us and I made all of these subsections for part one and I put over here on the right hand side on the notes pane in Scrivener because Scrivener gives you a place where you can track notes as you're writing. This is your writing area here in the middle. Left hand side is the organization of the document that you're making and you basically chop it up into little tiny pieces and then each of these little pieces that are over here on the left will compile together into a single document when you're done. So um, I don't have obviously much here because we're early in the process, but I did start writing a little bit to, um, to the introduction to the chapter or section one that we're working on. So what I do when I'm using um, Scrivener, when I get ready to actually put something in, like for example, I think I'm going to use this Weber quote um, here in my part of the discussion. 
I need to find Weber. <clears throat> Weber is right here. I often in Zotero am going back and forth between sorting by title when the list is short and by author when the list is long. So this is Weber. This is the person that I um, want to cite this from. I already grabbed this note because I think this is a good quote that I would like to use when I build this chapter. I tend to write um, in pieces. So as I find useful things, I kind of throw them on the page here and then I go back and work it into something that makes sense. This is from page 202. So this is my actual citation that I'm going to need for when I actually use this. You know, you obviously could build your citations however you want to. Um, it would go like this. I'm going to have to go back in and do whatever. You'll notice that this is not double spaced at this point. Um, it is also, it doesn't look like it's going to look, but the compile button here uh, that's in Scrivener, when you click this button, um, it actually brings up this dialog where it takes the content that you want to compile. And in my case um, here, as we begin writing this chapter, I'm not going to want to use every single thing here. I'm just going to want to work on the chapter one stuff. And I'm not even going to use you know, all of the sections here, like for the first part of the assignment, we're just doing background of the study and the problem statement. So I'm just going to probably compile those two sections once I'm done writing them, or actually just these two. Once I'm done writing them, when you click compile, we're going to put this out in APA format and we're compiling it for Microsoft Word. And so this is actually going to create a Word document that is going to be double spaced, one inch margins, 12 point font. Um, I usually take that as my working basis and then go into Word and do my finish work on the document. Several of you have pointed out that Zotero does have a plugin for Word where you can do your citations over there. You can also do them here. So just to point out, this is where you actually make this mess that you see in front of you in Scrivener into an actual document. It happens through compile. Um, if y'all want me to do more videos on Scrivener, I can do that. Uh, this, though, is my piece. Um, I'm going to need to add the reference in my references page to this. They usually give you sort of a starter page here, and I usually keep it just to help me remember how these work until I have to turn it in. Um, go back to Zotero, right-click it, choose Create Bibliography from Item, make sure it's set to Bibliography. I always set it to Copy to Clipboard. I want APA 7th. Click OK. Remember, we're going to get rid of these eventually. And here's my citation. It's not in um, hanging indent form. It's not necessarily properly um, formatted for double space. I'll take care of that when I get to Word. I don't care. I just want it here so I can actually use it. And you can see it's all here like it needs to be. So that gives me the basics of of that. So anyways, I like using Scrivener because I can use this blank space to work my way through the different sections of the paper. You can also switch into other modes like um, uh, little sections here where the different sub pages show up almost like card decks and you can see in the decks of cards what it is that you're working on. So it kind of gives you a quick overview or you can switch back to actually treating it like a written thing and you can see all your sections put together as well. So it's a neat tool. I think it dovetails nicely with Sotero. My pro process is usually to make notes and things over here whenever I'm reading articles that I think I might want to use later in my writing and then pull them here. But you can also in Scrivener down in the bottom, you can um, keep up the research area and the notes area in your document. Like I um, posted the content criteria for our scoring is down here in notes so that I've got the information that we're using. And like in my research, I've been um, starting to pile together some ideas just so that I can sort of chew on them and have a sense of where I might want to go. I've already kind of changed my topic from this. I may throw this stuff out, but I have it here and it can just sit under my notes kind of all in one place in my research section. And my goal would be to use this Scrivener project all the way from beginning to end. I'll just compile only the sections that I need as I turn stuff in. So I think that is everything. It was a quick flyby, but maybe you saw something there that was useful. So hope your research is going well, and uh, I hope you have a really awesome day. Thanks.